Is it actually time to start? Sorry? Yeah? Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't like it. Okay. I I see what the problem is and why you want to start with it. But you can also do much more collaborating. I don't think any way we can do that is a package that's got lots of links in. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, do you want to cover that here, or should we talk about it later? All right. Wookie, it's a Wookie. Okay. It's around starting time, I think. It was just an idea. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, does it? Uh, right. Do I, do I need to start? Nobody seems very interested. Right. Uh, okay. Everyone shut up. Listen. Uh, this is a super low-tech presentation. I'm afraid I've been busy all week, so I've um, not done any fancy slides. I'm not good at Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome our host, Uke, who will present us a nice talk about bootstrapping Debian in a fresh system. Signed off. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is, is read you a 50k email for this talk. I hope you enjoy that. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so I don't know how many of you uh, read this diligently when it arrived at 3 o'clock this morning. Um, I hope everyone is fully familiar with the material at hand. So in case you aren't, uh, it should tell you which bits are important. Uh, so, so last week, just the week before DevConf, we had a bootstrap sprint in Paris with um, most of the people who've been... Uh, taking an interest in especially the theory of this. Um, so, uh, and we got a surprising amount done actually. Uh, it was quite productive. Uh, we came up with some fairly crazy ideas. So, well, Helmut did actually. Blame Helmut for all the craziness. Um, he's, he's good at crazy ideas. Um, so, anyway, I will endeavour to uh, tell you the good bits without being too tedious. Um, so, primarily, so I'm I hope some of you are familiar with the subject matter in general of the fact that bootstraps in Debian are difficult, primarily because of cyclic dependencies. We've been kind of working our way through this for three or four years now, um, and uh, it's been relatively slow to actually get to a finished thing, but we are making progress, and we understand the problem a lot better, um, and there's various things we'd really quite like to have in Jesse, and uh, we haven't got much time left. Uh, which is one of the reasons we had this sprint just now, was to give us a fighting chance of getting some of these things done um, once we'd agreed on what the hell it was we were trying to do. Um, I hope you're all familiar with the uh, GNU terminology. Build architecture is what you build on. Host architecture is what you're building for. Um, well, what the code you build will run on. Uh, and target architecture is, if it's a compiler or a tool like that, um, what it generates code for. Um, so... Uh, Unfortunately, this isn't in the ideal order, so there's a whole load of... So, Helmut has been running this thing called Rebootstrap, um, which is a really nasty, hacky script. I find the right window. Um, so, there is a web page all about it. Uh, but it basically does the whole Bootstrap from scratch. So, uh, builds across toolchain uh, from the Debian packages, and then starts cross-building the core 160-odd packages you need to do Bootstrap. Um, and at the moment, it gets about 40 packages in. Um, before things break. So that's running on uh, the Debian Jenkins infrastructure uh, and sends us a lot of tedious IRC messages every time it breaks, which is mostly. Uh, so that's a really, really useful thing because you get to find out what's broken. Uh, so part of the stuff we discussed was uh, all the things that go wrong. So uh, I'm going to come back to some of this because, to be honest, it's details for most of you. But there's, there's a lot of little things in the archive which are problematic. Like, you don't actually know what the set of essential packages is until you've built them because the information's in the binary. Um, and uh, so you can look at another architecture and hope it's the same, but nothing necessarily causes that to be true. Um, and uh, things which depend on build essential in base packages uh, don't say so. 
And whilst you're bootstrapping, you haven't got Build Essential yet, so you need to know which parts of Build Essential something actually needs. And we don't write that down anywhere either. Um, and things depend on uh, virtual packages, um, which is normally fine, uh, so provides. Uh, but again, during bootstrapping, you don't know which package is going to provide the provides, because you haven't got the list yet. Uh, so you don't know what to build next in order to get the thing you need. Um, and there's, there's four different ways we could fix that. Um, so, uh, you could provide the list of provides uh, in the packages list. Uh, you could just not depend on virtual packages if you're in the essential set. So we could just say that people shouldn't do that because if you depend on the real package, so instead of depending on libxpat, you depend on libxpat1 uh, and then we'd know what to build. Um, the problem with that is that, that makes people's transitions harder. I mean, that's the reason people do this. Um, you could swap the names around in the uh, or lists. Um, and we could also, if it's a real meta package, like say libdb uh, dev, that's a defaults package which sets which version of libdb is actually the current libdb. Uh, that's fine because it's a real package and we know to build that uh, and then everything works. So these all have pros and cons uh, and yeah, there's reasons the way we do things the way we do but they all are slightly problematic for bootstrapping purposes. Um, and basically anyone who cares about this stuff, uh, we would, uh, we would if, if you can read this, basically I don't want to go through it all in great detail here because there isn't time and it's kind of dull. Um, <laughs> but um, if people can understand some of this stuff, it will be nice to know which of these options you really, really hate and which ones you prefer. Um, because we may not have understood the full situation, we're very much focused on this particular part of the problem and there's reasons why people uh, use virtual packages um, the way they do. Um, source versions and binary versions vary, blah, blah, blah. Yes, so another thing we talked about was uh, partial architectures, this has been a subject for like four years. We worked out one way we could do this, uh, a UDS, I remember years ago, but nobody's actually cared enough to go and make dpackage understand about um, hardware capabilities, exactly which ISA something's built for. So when we specify an architecture in Debian, that's an ABI, technically, not an instruction set. So, you know, you can build ARMHF for V6 if it's Raspbian or V7 if it's Debian. Still ARMHF. And it doesn't say anywhere in those packages that these packages will only run on V7 hardware and these will run on V6. Um, so that you can't do automated, um, please don't install stuff that will just explode on my computer. And it would be nice if there was some metadata somewhere that said what it was expecting. Uh, so that things could either stop you installing stuff that won't run or install optimized packages suitable for your ISA. Uh, so we currently do that in the package namespace by, you know, for a few packages that care, like libc and mplayer and things, we have dash i386 versions. Um, but it'd be nice if it was actually an orthogonal bit of the package metadata. So we, we went through that. The MIPS people particularly care because they've got stupid instruction set sets that don't just go forwards like they do in sensible architectures. So in, on x86, you get the core stuff, and then you get some extra instructions, and then you get some more extra instructions, and some more extra instructions as we went 586, 686, whatever the hell we're on now. Uh, the MIPS people threw away old instructions uh, when they added new ones. So uh, the only thing that everything will run is now extremely old and rather inefficient. And they'd like to be able to use some newer stuff, but they need some kind of mechanism to really make that practical in Debian without just rebuilding everything and having a, a separate repository. So as ever, uh, somebody needs to do the work. Um, the deep package maintainer didn't object violently so long as it wasn't part of the dependency tree. So if you build the same package for two different ISAs, it's the same package so far as dpackage is concerned in terms of what it satisfies in the dependency tree. It's just an optimization which ISA you built it for. As soon as you try and put it into the, you know, what makes these packages different from dpackage's point of view, uh, this goes absolutely crazy. And um, we would not get that past the dpackage people. And I think that's a reasonable stance to take. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure anyone's actually going to do this work. We were hoping the Raspbian people would, because they had this problem pretty badly, but they didn't care enough. They just did a separate repo, because it's easier. Um, and unfortunately, that's always easier for any one case. Um, but it doesn't really solve the general problem. So uh, a bigger subject is cross-compilers in main. So everyone's been going, why don't we have cross-compilers in main for some years now? Because um, we've had them in MDebian since 2004. 
and various people have made extra repositories. Um, and, uh, well, because it's difficult is the main reason, or at least it's awkward. Um, so we discussed various aspects of this, uh, as was covered last year. The naming conventions are a bit odd, because you have uh, triplet GCC is the binary you run, but you install a package called GCC triplet, and people who aren't familiar with this go, why? <laughs> um, and now would be a good time to change everything around if we were going to try and normalize it and make it all orthogonal, but we decided it was too much like hard work, and there's so much documentation being written and given upstream conventions it didn't seem worth the pain. We could use some provides to give extra names to packages to make it a bit less confusing. Uh, that's fairly painless. Um, there's a problem of how many cross tool chains do you want? Um, there are a lot of architectures. The full matrix of everything for everything is an awful lot of compilers, uh, most of which are nearly useless. Um, so you only really want cross compilers on fast or possibly popular architectures targeting other things. Um, uh, so pretty much you want AMD64 to everything. You might arguably want PPC EL to everything now as it's fastest, but uh, we haven't, most people haven't got one of those, so I guess that's not a huge demand yet. Um, and there's a question of where this data should live. Uh, you know, you've got bin utils and GCC uh, and some other things like package config. Uh, and you'd quite like your set of pieces to match up. Uh, and if, if we wrote this all down in one place, uh, that would make uh, things a bit neater. Uh, currently, that's not done. Uh, each package decides for itself which flavors it builds. And I am quite interested to know which sets people want. So if there's anything unobvious, there's a hand up over there. Um, please come and tell me that you want some particular obscure combination. No, I was, the first thing, question I want to ask is, are you talking about cross tool chains with the goal of building Debian packages or just in general? Uh, so um, there's the set that we actually build in the archi archive, right, okay. that are available to just install as binaries. Obviously, it should be very easy to build anything else that you want for some obscure purpose. But, you know, what is it worth us building for everybody? Yeah, so I think there might be some of these... No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, of course not. But I mean, you might be wanting targeting architectures which are not in Debian. Yes, uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, and uh, so it wasn't clear to me if that, if you think that's out of scope or that's part of the scope. No, of this uh, clearly that's useful and indeed necessary, especially when an architecture is new. Um, you know, you can't use any of the multi-arch stuff, for example. Uh, so yeah, we and people need to do that. I don't know which architectures, now that we've just added a couple of the more important ones, um, most of what we're interested in is now in Debian, but I don't know what's outside that we think is important. We should, we, we should definitely have the, all the cases where there are sort of obvious pairs or triplets, I guess, with ARM. With ARM. Um, so I want uh, PPC64EL to PowerPC, for instance. Uh, and that's because sometimes uh, using often even using multi-arch uh, cross builds is now more convenient than using traditional M30, things like minus M32 exactly. uh, multi-lib builds, uh, particularly with, uh, I think, PPC64EL to PowerPC does, well, it kind of has M32 support. You have, sort of to, said they weren't supporting you have to be the, excruciatingly that. careful mm. with it. But, so, yeah. I'm generally in favor of, of having a tool chain for one thing, and as little multi-libbing as we can get away with, but obviously some architectures like x86, that's deeply ingrained, and we can't throw that away, but. Yeah, we are definitely interested to also have cross-compiler for architecture which are not in Debian. Uh, right now, for example, for QMU, we need to build a firmware, and uh, we don't provide the firmware for alpha, for example, so p the QMU alpha system alpha in uh, Debian is basically useless without it. And, uh, yeah, that's true. Is anyone taking notes? Somebody take notes. <laughs> Stick your hand up. Who's taking and notes? still for Spark, Spark 64, and even if you want to run PPC64EL, you need a 64-bit firmware. So Sloth, it's called, and uh, you need a poor PC64 cross-compiler. 
So, oh, so right now it's solved more or less by uh, building a cross compiler in the package, but that's very ugly. Mm. That's the only solution we have now, and we would be very interested by uh, having cross tool chain instead. So you're probably better. the expert on weird packages that need to build bootloader firmware uh, and what the set of, <laughs> of those might be. A few of them. Yeah. Um, Yes, it seems slightly perverse building a cross-compiler uh, just for that one thing, but uh, as you say, the alternative is to build it in the package, so yeah, or not do it at all. It's ugly, but at least uh, it means a normal user can uh, patch the, the package and rebuild it uh, himself. Up to now, it was not possible, so if you don't have the hardware, you cannot modify, and I'm not sure it's very compliant uh, with the DFSG in that case. Yes. Okay. So, um, so is, that, is someone taking notes? Somebody, please. Come on, just a volunteer. God, it's hard work. Because um, uh, I'll forget. Um, so yes, uh, there's that general question. So uh, uh, the next point is. Yes, I'm okay. I think things like Cortex M series should definitely be a valid target. Of course, yes. not a host. Uh, and so that's basically fixed with the bare metal. Okay. Toolchain set, which because it doesn't include libcs, is a whole much simpler, and that already works and is already in the archive, so that's done. Um, and, and then there's a problem there. Do you might some people might also be interested in doing similar things for MIPS with the Big Thirty Two MIPS based. Yes, so MIPS people might want an equivalent. So that's currently it's like a 50 multi libs for every conceivable variety of uh, ARM Cortex core. Uh, and I guess you could build another one for every f conceivable flavor of MIPS widgetry. Um, the other thing, actually, that's an architecture that we do need to target and isn't can't be multi-arched is Mingu 64, the Windows things, because we, we build Windows tools. Uh, actually, it's part of DI, part of the bootstrap. Jesus. Um, <laughs> so, yes, uh, there's lots of little interesting pieces to this. Uh, what else is there? Um, so at the moment, um, because not everything, not all the dev packages are multi-arched, there's a lot of stuff uh, where things still ship headers in the in user include rather than an architecture specific directory. Uh, and we don't really have good tools. It would be useful to have a Lintian check that told maintainers they were doing this and could they please stop um, and multi-arch things. Because um, we haven't been doing that much building in the arch. So if you build in a Cheroot always, you don't notice this problem too much because you only install the stuff you wanted. Uh, but as soon as people just start using cross compilers willy-nilly, possibly on their real systems, which we don't really recommend, um, you'll get wrong headers until we have multi-arched everything. I'm not quite sure how far th through that process we are. Um, I know Ubuntu is further through it. I think most of that's come back into Debian. Um, there's a little wrinkle with GCC Multilib, which provides uh, an ASM link to a particular to the native architecture, and if that's present when you cross-build, you'll get wrong stuff. So, um, Docco, does this mean that ASM link thing? Does that mean we can only build in a cheroot because you'll always have that thing present on a normal system? Or you don't need to install GCC Multilib. Okay. So when do you need to install GCC Multilib? Well, if I want to use smarty lips. Okay. <laughs> you see, I don't know what I'm talking about, it turns out. Um, right down the front. Well, basically anything that uses minus M32 or minus M64 right. in, a, um, in, a boot pro uh, sorry, in a build process is going to uh, need GCC multi-lib as a build dependency. So... I mean, yes, anybody who isn't already doing all of their package builds in uh, in a clean shirt should have started doing so several years ago. Um, but this is another reason why it's a good idea if yes. you're also doing cross -building. Exactly. So if we conflict with that, it'll stop people shooting themselves in the foot. I really am wanted to say something. Yes, at some point it will be nice if we can also directly get rid of multilib for architecture we are already have in the archive. I say, for example, for uh, if you want to be live through 86 on AM64, you can use a cross compiler and that will get rid of the um, get rid of the BArch package we have in the archive. They are very ugly and uh, it causes a lot of issue because right now we don't support cross architecture conflict, so we end up with a lot of people installing libc6 
dash IMD64 for i386 on IMD64 system because, for example, S364 depends on it. And people say, oh, I have a 64-bit system, so I will install S364 instead of S3. And uh, that's a pain to handle because both uh, the native libc6 package and the libc6 dash amd64 wants to provide the uh, ldso linker mm -hmm. so uh, yes doctor wishes to disagree with you um uh, <laughs> we we really need to sort out uh, cross build uh, sorry uh, multi arch build dependencies on build d's before we can do that because uh, we do have packages uh, grub md64 uh, grub efi md64 uh, builds with minus m64 on i386 for people running i386 on systems with 64 bit efi firmware which do exist so um, this is this is long term, but sure, sure. Yeah, I could just carry on with this. Marvellous. Um, so yes, we already have a cross bin utils package in Unstable, which has been there for a while. That's a relatively simple piece of work on its own. Um, GCC is harder, and we have this problem that because the cross compiler depends on um, we done uh, depends on uh, libraries of the host architecture. You've either got to build those again, uh, so you bootstrap. So you get a libgcc-cross package uh, for the host architecture, or you've got to use the one, the multi-arch library that's in the archive. Um, so we either have to be able to do builds using multi-arch, which is not something we've ever done before, or we have to use the uh, bootstrap toolchain method for which packages have been in Ubuntu for some time. Now, at the moment, those packages are broken and not working in Debian, and we need to fix that, because we have to have some of those for at least architectures outside uh, the archive. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, uh, I generally like the multi-arch build method because it's a lot simpler uh, and already works, but uh, needs archive changes. Now, last night we got sbuild working, so sbuild now does multi-arch builds. If you have a dependency on colon rml, it'll just stick it in, uh, add that architecture, and then do the build, which works nicely. Colin looks puzzled. You will if your cross toolchain if you if cross toolchain packages only build for one host architecture target architecture oh, sorry four. yeah rather than the thing that builds for seventeen which would just go wrong <laughs> so I, I propose to upload like a uh, cross GCC four point nine RML package rather than a cross GCC that builds fifty seven cross compilers because one of them is guaranteed to go wrong and the thing will never work uh, now maybe one day we could make them cleverer. But uh, I think one architecture at a time is, is a wise plan. So there is a Git repo in the Alioth cross toolchain project, which is where we're coordinating this stuff, um, which generates a load of source packages, one for each target architecture. Um, and that all works nicely. So those cross toolchains are available in Dima Kogan's secret source.net repository, um, which I even have here somewhere. Um, if you want to just try stuff out now, he's been building those for a while. Uh, and that works quite nicely. It's actually a one-liner to just build, um, as long as you can do uh, downloads during the package build, which of course we don't allow uh, in the archive, unfortunately. Um, associated with this, you need some extra bits and pieces, like cross-package config. So uh, part of Helmut's crazy scheme. So at the moment in Ubuntu, the way this is done is there's a cross-build essential package, which depends on the foreign libc and uh, a triplet package config to bring in the pieces you need, and depackage cross uh, to bring in the autocomp settings. Um, uh, and that works. Um, but what you could do is uh, split package config into two halves. Um, so you put all of what's currently in there in package config bin, and then have a little empty uh, package config, which is multi-arch same. 
uh, which just contains the triplet. And that way uh, you don't have to specially install uh, triplet package config and it doesn't have to be something that's part of build essential. Uh, Multi-arch build will just cause it, the dependencies will just pan out and you'll get uh, a triplet package config command whenever you build for an architecture, which is really rather neat. I like that. Um, unfortunately, the package config maintainer is not convinced, but uh, that's an argument we have to have. Um, similarly, we can do the same thing for GCC. So this was the really crazy part, um, which uh, and if I scroll down a lot, da -da -da, come back to some of this. Um, here we are. This. Now you have to read this, right, because it does your head in. It took us two hours, and um, we all think about this stuff on a regular basis, to convince ourselves that this isn't totally mad uh, and does in fact work. So we have, a, we have a problem at the moment that packages depend on GCC dash version. Uh, you know, something depends on GCC 4.7 because it doesn't build with 4.8 or 4.9. Uh, but what they actually meant was GCC for host 4.7, right? Because it's actually the, the compiler for the thing you're trying to build for. So when you're cross-compiling, that's a different package to when you're natively compiling. And there's this question of how do you translate build dependencies when, you're cr when they change when you're crossing. So we had, we had six different schemes listed on a big web page, and we went through them all and invented a seventh one, <laughs> <laughs> which is, in fact, to use multi-arch. If you make little fake multi-arch packages uh, and arrange things properly, you can now depend on a GCC for build or a GCC for host package, and they could be versioned. Uh, and that will magically install the right thing. One in you is not version, so it's not That's correct. But it, so that, and, and the point is, if you use this, you now have to use triplet GCC everywhere. You can't just use GCC and expect to get the right one, because the question is, what does that mean? Which GCC? Um, so this is quite radical, but it's also quite clever, uh, and we believe it works. These packages are, as of... Um, yesterday, or no, today, uh, in the secret source repo. Well, we're just kind of putting them in at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure we've done it all yet. Uh, so it would be nice if people experiment with that, uh, and if we believe it works, we should perhaps start using it. The transition plan is probably okay. We can leave the existing GCC packages more or less as they are. Um, so anyway, that is um, quite interesting. I'm not going to try and explain in detail, because I only get it wrong. Um, Use multi-arch, it just means the right things get installed. Steve wants to say something? So I was reading this in your, your mail, and I was it, it was not altogether clear from, from my reading. When you say GCC-4-host, you actually mean, for instance, GCC-4.7-4-host? Exactly. OK, so yeah, just, just that comment that it, it's a little bit unclear. Also, you saying it's in the secret sauce repository and that people should try it out. I think we might want a more um, unambiguous pointer to that than... Yes, I should. Uh, that possibly isn't in this mail because we forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, it's there. Toolchains.secretsource.net. Oh, it actually is secret sauce. Yes. <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> As I said, there isn't a full set of packages there yet, because we were just working it out. But there will be uh, very soon, like maybe later today, if we're organized. Um, they're also in my people.debian.org repo as well, but um, this has probably got more stuff in it at the moment. Um, and Dima isn't going on holiday for the next two weeks. So if you do actually want to try it, it might still be working. Um, what else is important? Uh, the other uh, interesting idea we had was uh, we thought about the autoconf problem of... Uh, so at the moment, if you build with autoconf, if you cross-build with autoconf, something somewhere needs to tell you how big your ints are and your longs and a whole lot of other things like that you can't run a live configure test on because it's the wrong architecture. And uh, autoconf has good support for this. There's a whole load of magic variables uh, and that those are currently stored in dpackage cross. And if you want to use it, you have to set config site equals slash etc deep package cross config architecture so that it gets pulled in. But actually, if you look in a modern configure file, uh, it already lists the location in user lib something or user share something. Uh, and we should probably be using that. And also, collecting all the config for all the packages in the world together in a bucket that we maintain badly is the wrong way to do it. Uh, a package should be supplying its own uh, config settings and we should have a mechanism to install them in a .d directory and suck them all in. That's kind of the right way to do this. So we thought that through and have come up with a scheme. 
uh, which ought to work, although we tried it for 15 minutes and it didn't seem to. Um, so that could be improved. So ideally, depackage cross will kind of go away because that's uh, its last important job. Um, I don't know whether that's going to get done right now. Uh, it's not actually very hard. It's a shell script that um, has some local overrides, copies in all the things from the directory, and we use our own. And we should be able to migrate fairly easily as packages add their own config. That would overwrite the existing set of stuff. Um, so that mechanism works well. It's just that we should tidy it up and make it better fit the way autoconf expects to find things. You don't have to set a magic variable, and if you forget, it won't work. Um, it is possible to have co-installable toolchains. Um, so you can have an i386 toolchain on a, a MD64 machine, uh, and that fits orthogonally with all this uh, other things. Uh, but that involves swapping all the symlinks around between triplet GCC and GCC, which one's the symlink, um, which is a bit of a pain. It's certainly not going to happen right now. As far as we can tell, it is possible, and Helmut's quite keen to do it. And it is useful for things like trying to build anything Haskell-y on a, an i386 machine because it uses so many billions of pointers, you use half as much memory if you do it with an i386 compiler. So um, that is still attractive to some people, and it would be kind of neat if we made it work. But I'm not sure many people apart from Helmut care. He's prepared to do the work. Uh, Doco didn't complain too much about having everything changed around. Um, what else? Quarter of an hour. Um, Multi-arch builds. So as I said, uh, one way of getting cross-compilers in the archive is to just build GCC against the existing libc and libgcc1 and libstudc++. Uh, it makes it a very simple build, because um, you haven't got to do the whole bootstrap dance, but it only works for architectures in the archive, uh, and it only works if the archive can cope with not being self-consistent within an architecture, which is an assumption we've had since forever. Um, I fixed the sbuild part. I assume some things in uh, want to build DAC and Brittany will get confused if you have dependencies outside the architecture. Now, I don't know if anyone here is sufficiently familiar to know what will actually break. Uh, Colin knows. Uh, if somebody knows Brittany better. <coughs> okay. Nobody else volunteering. Um, yeah, Brittany will uh, just break hard. If you're, um, I assume you're just say this can never migrate. You're not going to get anything like this into testing it, unless it's manually overridden by the release team. So there is a faux packages scheme, uh, faux for French for false, um, in Brittany. So the the release team can manually say, pretend that this uh, package stanza exists. Okay. Uh, so it is. Is that how cross build essential be. works in Ubuntu? Because uh, yes. Yes, it's hammered in with a big stick. Right. Uh, the um, <laughs> Uh, you want to you want to have you want to do that rather than forcing in other ways because otherwise Brittany may decide to trade off your installability against somebody else's, which is not what you want. So um, it can be done, but it will be a hassle. So we'd have a specific list. I mean, there aren't many packages that should need this. I guess there's some of these bootloader packages conceivably will be depending on. They're, they tend to be standalone. They have okay. they have cross arch build depths, but they tend to be very standalone at runtime. Uh, okay. So it is only cross compilers, basically. Cross compilers, wine, a few other things like that. Right. Okay. So um, yeah, working out how much. So at the moment, the question is: Is it more work to make that work, or, or um, get the Bootstrap uh, toolchains actually working in Debian? I, I don't know. Um, uh, whichever one's working first, we can stick in. Is the current thinking on this uh, procedure? Uh, I am more interested in getting the multi-arch stuff working, but uh, I've, I've done a bit of both. Um, we do have to get a move on, because we haven't got very long if we want to get any cross-compilers in Jesse, and I'm away for the next two weeks. Um, so yes, there's this question of, you can do this either way, uh, and we need to make at least one of them work sharpish. Um, if anyone wants to help with that, me and Dima have been doing some useful work uh, yesterday. Um, I don't know if there's time for more sitting down <laughs> over the next couple of days. Um, what else have we got? Uh, <coughs> actually building other stuff using your cross-compilers. Um, yeah, we did that part. Uh, uh, yeah, so things you shouldn't do when cross-building uh, depend on foreign binaries, or well, things like help to man, where you just run 
uh, the program uh, and then stick its output in a man page. It's very convenient. Uh, it's very annoying for cross builders. Uh, because you could just depend on the native version of help to man, but then it might be a different version and you'll get the wrong stuff. And you go, well, does that matter? Maybe not. Maybe. Um, I think we don't have a mechanism for. That's right, we can't build depend on the same version of the um, package in the other architecture. We don't actually have a way of expressing that because that's what you actually mean. It's also madness. <laughs> <laughs> self depending. Well, effectively, lots of things self depend already. Yeah, they just don't. They just don't say so. And it's not until you try cross building that you discover that the thing self depends. Well, so if you wrote it down, that might be a good thing. Uh, anyway, so that's the thing. So help to man is very convenient, but it does annoy all the cross builders. Now, in many cases, just missing out on the man page when cross building is just fine. Uh, it'll work for all the purposes you care about. Um, but that's one of the examples of why people say, well, we could just cross build this architecture. Well, you could, but you'd get different stuff, or you'd have all the docs missing, or whatever. Um, so cross build packages do not always come out the same unless we do quite a lot of work to solve problems like this. One of the things we did do was fix libtool. Hooray! So libtool has been blocking multi-arch builds in Debian for two years with a bug going. What the hell do we do about libtool? The problem is that 99% of things that use libtool just use the shell script and it's all architecture independent, but the tiny fraction use the actual libtool binary, which is arch dependent. And the question is, how does that fit with multi-arch so that the right, when something depends on libtool, which half of libtool did it want? We never expressed that. Um, so Docco uh, actually did a load of testing a while ago uh, and the maintainer wasn't quite sure what to do and uh, kindly said, please just upload something, let's see what happens. Uh, totally broke it in Ubuntu and then fixed it. Uh, yes, we did, we, did, uh, did, we did upload two broken, well, Docco uploaded two broken patch versions before. Uh, <laughs> well, one of them was my fault. Okay, <laughs> cool. Anyway, so um, we've only done half the split, so I think we've split it up, but there's still, later on we should split these two halves and see just how many things actually break because they did want the binary of libtool. Um, not very many, I think, is the answer. And we should probably actually change that dependency in the package so they're saying what it is they're depending on. But the point about this is that an awful lot more things will now, if you do app get build dep um, dash air architecture something package, um, stuff will install. Well, not yet. No? Libtool still depends on libtool bin. Okay. So does that mean it doesn't work if you need it on the build architecture and the host architecture still. So the plan is uh, to drop the, uh, the dependency in libtool on libtool bin uh, after we identify all the... Um, on the screen. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, but I think, I think having it explained in words is a lot clearer than trying to understand what's written down. So, okay, so that's half done. We've made some progress. Uh, we noticed that Guile didn't cross-build uh, if the target was ARM or ARM64, which was annoying. Uh, so this is why Rebootstrap is useful. Even though everything's broken, Rebootstrap will still make test stuff and we can find out what's bust uh, in time to fix it. That was actually quite easy to fix. So Guile has to guess the word size and endianness of the architecture. It's, uh, so it can cross-build all its own stuff. Guile's a, a Lisp-like, schemey language thing. Um, and yeah, it can, it can cross easily, but it just needs to know uh, what it's, how big the words and endianness is on the target, uh, and it just guesses that from the triplet with some ugly string matching, which oddly enough was completely wrong for ARM. Uh, so that was easy to fix. Um, blah blah blah. Uh, stuff about what we're doing with the. Yeah, running more tests. So we already have the sort of weather tests for weather installability. But this was about um, build dependency installability, adding it to Ralph's list. He's already put our new architectures on his page within hours of the uh, announcement. That was very helpful. Um, it will be really useful to know how much of our archive does in fact cross. Um, so I did some tests a while back, and Colin's been doing slightly more um, uh, often in Ubuntu, we run a test every few months, I think. Um, <laughs> it depends how much client fixing. It depends how much work is to do. Um, so, you know, if the package tracker told you whether your package crossed, um, um, that would be useful. It would also be useful if there was a field you could put in to say, "This is never going to cross. It's a dumb idea. Please stop badgering me." Um, that would also be useful. So uh, I have a spare box, so I'm going to set up my crossing infrastructure again. At the moment, mostly you get can't, can't cross-install dependencies for an awful lot of stuff, and we need to fix that. 
um, we're working on it. Uh, what else? Um, so bootstrapability, whether you are in fact blocking the bootstrap uh, or not. I have five minutes left. Um, should also be in the PTS system. Uh, similarly, if your packages have not been multi-arched, uh, it will be useful to tell people that. Uh, so for a long time, still, the multi-arch docs tell people not to worry too much about their dash dev packages. That is wrong and out of date, but we haven't actually changed the docs, so oddly enough, most maintainers are doing what they're told, and we should probably fix that. Uh, in fact, we should have fixed it ages ago. Someone please edit the wiki page. Uh, oh, build profiles. We changed it all again. I'm sorry. Um, so <laughs> once we got Guillaume in a room uh, with the man who'd done all the patches, uh, we were able to have a long and confusing argument about exactly, basically whether if you have specified two build dependencies, uh, like, you know, stage one and cross, is it both of those or either of those? So what went into dpackage was not what uh, Johannes originally envisaged. Uh, and we were finally able to sort this out uh, and decide something. Well, they changed it after I left, so I left like, like you know, 6 p.m. on the last day, and the last three hours after that, it all got changed again. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> so the profile dot part, namespacing, has gone, which is quite radical, because after thinking about it for a long time, we couldn't think of a situation where that namespacing was different from just adding another word, another name for something else. It amounts to the same thing. So uh, that's a hell of a lot simpler and shorter and nicer. So uh, this is what we've ended up with. Uh, so it's taken a long time, but um, I think it's actually quite a sensible design in the end, which is good. Uh, so patches for that are done, uh, currently being tested. Um, I guess uh, I'm still not quite sure. So that sh will should be in the D package. Uh, I guess that's not going. The D package is going to be released with Jesse. Yes, that's right. We can't get it in stable stuff, but we can get it in what's going to be released, so we can use it from now on, um, or from release on. Yes, so the profile prefix is gone. There's a big explanation of why, and that all seems sensible. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so if you use a, a stage build, there's a question of how different can it be from the normal build? Uh, is it just dropping dependencies, or are you allowed to do something completely different? Um, and uh, the deep package way of thinking is if you depend on something, it still needs to provide the same interfaces. So if, if anything you drop is kind of functional, it really ought to have a different name. Um, that's quite strict, um, but it is probably the only thing that would allow proper automation. Uh, so uh, that's what we will be telling people to do. So you can leave the docs out, that's all fine, because that's hardly ever a, uh, a functional interface. Um, what else? Uh, so we'll make the no doc thing official, which has been used in quite a lot of packages for years, but it's never written down in policy anywhere. Um, that can be used either as a dev build option or as a profile. Uh, just about out of time. Rebootstrap, I've told you, is this handy tool. And uh, Botch is now in uh, the new queue as of about two days ago. So that's the bootstrap ordering tool, which is basically about 40 scripts that do interesting and useful things about whether things are installable and whether they're cross-buildable and uh, drawing graphs of, of just how tied together everything is and ranking things in order of how many other things they block. Um, Josh wrote 40 man pages in a day, which I thought was pretty impressive. Uh, is there anything else really important? I should tell you in the last two minutes. Um, add a target architecture to the dpackage. We've been able to specify the build and host architecture since forever, but you could never specify the target architecture. Um, that was easy to add. Uh, oh, and the multi-arch interpreter problem. So we had a massive discussion about this last year at DevConf and came up with a solution, but it turns out that it isn't going to work because of the way dpackage is. Uh, so, um, 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 what do I need to say about this in the remaining 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, so you could pretend that all, architecture all packages were in fact architecture any packages if they were involved in a tree um, of, so it's basically things like Perl modules. You have architecture any, architecture all, and then the way multi-arch works, it doesn't care what's below that, but in fact they still have to match up. So if you pretended that those things were virtually architecture any, it would all still work. The D package would have to keep track, uh, but uh, Guillaume didn't like that, so that's not what we're going to do. Uh, so we don't have a solution yet.
Uh, this is still a problem. There are about 300 packages. There's that multi-arch spec changes page lists all the affected packages, um, which is an awful lot of Perl and quite a lot of mono somewhere. Never mind. Um, yes, I should shut up because I've run out of time, and that was pretty much it. If anybody cares about any of that stuff, please... Come and talk to me. Um, yeah, I nearly fit into 45 minutes. Sorry. <laughs>